I told you all these trees fell in my neighborhood from the hurricane. And I've been, people, these tree guys have been cutting up all these big trees. So I've been grabbing branches left and right. And I grabbed this really cool looking branch. And I put it in the Boland's Python cage. Look at this boy. He loves it. He loves it. He's climbing. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today we're going to be taking a look at some boas, some boas I'm pairing up, some boas that are coming up the line and that might be potential breedings, breeders, some boas that I might even, you know, sell, you know, that are available that maybe you guys don't even know I have. So we're going to go into the snake room, take a look at that. We're going to also, I've been um, looking through my yard, my backyard for great pieces of fallen tree stumps, not even stumps, like branches, heavy branches, thick branches for all my enclosures especially the outdoor ones, which I showed you the other day. But you know, I get these four foot vision cages too that can absolutely use some, some cool pieces. I wanna get some pieces for even future cages that I might get, three footers or two footers, even that where I'm gonna like maybe display my corn snakes and stuff like that. Because any kind of good branches or any kind of like stuff that will just sit really nice in the cage where you can kind of have a, a snake perch on it, you can put some greens around it. It's just gonna look really nice, so. I got all this stuff here. I'd be, it'd be terrible if they mulched everything and they took it away and I just left these stumps and then I'll be kicking myself for not doing it. I gotta go out and buy them. So th this stuff is really nice. So I, I have put a few pieces in my cages. I might show you that. And uh, you never know what else we might run into along the way. So stay tuned. All right, just looking at some cool snakes in my collection. And this uh, VPI T-positive crystal is something that I, I showed you when I originally got it. And I actually have two sisters. You can see they have, the crystal is the super labyrinth. Okay, and then the VPIT positive is, is that really, really nice T positive albino line. Crystals usually have blue eyes. They're white with blue eyes, with pink tones. This one has pink eyes because We've reduced so much melanin, we've taken the blue even away. Because think about it, when you take black and you take some melanin away from a black eye, you get like a brownish eye. You take a little bit more away, you get like a tan eye. You take a little bit more away, you get a blue eye. And then if you take a little more of the blue away, you get a, like a pinkish eye. And then if you take it all away, you usually get a bright red eye. And then if you put the IMG gene into the eye, uh, because there's no melanin, you get a, like a really dark red eye almost. So. This is a VPI crystal. This is a female. And here's her sister. Now the sister almost has a whitish eye. So I'm wondering if there's other genes in here, like maybe the hypo gene. She's still got a reddish eye, but it's like a white red eye. You know, and that usually implies that there's some kind of hypo gene in there or something like that possibly. Definitely has a red pupil with a white eye. So, beautiful once again. It's funny how the um, VPIT positive works so well with the, with the lab gene and the, and the crystal. Beautiful, beautiful, two beautiful sisters. I'll probably sell one, so if anyone's interested, let me know. It won't be cheap though. It's a lot of good genes in there. Great genetic combination. Beautiful babies though. All right, there's another, you know, I guys, I love the fire gene, even though I can't get them to breed. <laughs> I still love it. This is a motley fire. It's het leopard, which is an interesting combination. And I've show, I showed it to you when I first got this little boy, but I think it's a very, very interesting combination. I think leopard fire is gonna look really cool. Leopard motley fires will look cool. Obviously leopard motleys are gonna produce eclipses fire will lighten that so you're gonna probably get like a reddish looking eclipse but even if you don't get the eclipse i just would like to see what a fire leopard looks like i think those would be cool in their own right so but we're a few years off that i still have this beautiful beautiful scoria girl here who i believe to be hypo and img you can see the hypo gene really erases. First of all, you can see the, the black that's usually in the saddles is completely red. 
but you wouldn't even know it was IMG until you look at the head and you see like that dark like eye stripe there and the little speckling on the head. You wouldn't see that with, if it was just hyposcoria. And so this is a really low expression IMG hyposcoria female that's been, you know, she's growing nicely, nice slow, being slow grown. She is for sale. She's really nice. She's uh, got some really cool looking eyes. And if anyone's interested, hit me up. Beautiful girl. You know, I was gonna originally sell this this boy, and then I wanted to decide I was gonna keep him, and now I'm I'm still on the fence. This is a what I believe to be a super hypo. It's definitely hypo, but it's probably super hypo. Very clean looking. Annery. So it's type one annery. 100% head sharp albino, IMG. So it's an increasing melanistic gene. You're not gonna see much darkness into this animal because it is super hypo, but very cool looking. Very, very cool looking. Super hypo gene erased a lot of that darkness. And Annery bow is a really cool in general. He's got a lot of like granite darkness in his face. I'm still thinking I might want to keep him. He's kind of cool. The fact that he's had sharp albino is kind of cool. Produce sharp snows with this, sharp moon glows with this. I am an utter shock that I still have this female, this blood, 66% head leopard, 66% head Gilbert T positive, female. I'm really surprised. Females usually sell pretty well, especially a two-year-old female. These are dwarf boas. These are gonna stay really small. These are dwarf boas. And she's not in a good mood right now, so we're gonna leave her alone. But she, uh, she's two years old, and she'll probably breed in two years. You know, these dwarf boas have to be a little older, more on the forefoot side, but she doesn't like that I'm filming her. That's okay. <laughs> She's in a bad mood. <laughs> Look at that. I don't think I've been attacked that many times by a bow in a long time. I will leave her alone. If anyone's interested, let me know. <laughs> She's usually not like this. All right, here's another female I have. This one is also a visual blood. Only this one I believe to be also a visual T positive or Gilbert T positive. You can see it's much lighter than the other one. Just as just as uh, spunky as the other one. <laughs> These little dwarf bows. They're like uh, have Napoleon complexes. This is also 66% het uh, leopard. So that's another great female we have here. Two years old, same litter. If you guys are interested, let me know. And here's a different litter. This is another blood, but this is from a completely different litter. This is a blood gene that is power het. That means it's either het for sharp albino or het for bow woman caramel. And it's also het for Annery type two, which is the Central American Annery gene. Really got nice looking. This was like very red when he was born and he completely got this deep burnt looking color. I really like it a lot. He's got a really nice stripe on him. This guy's ready to breed. Matter of fact, I might even use him for breeding. He's he's so nice. I mean, visual blood plus para hat. Um, Putting even aside the Annery too, I don't even care about it, but that's, uh, he's nice. He turned out really, I haven't looked at him really for a while. And now I'm kind of thinking that I might actually keep this guy and put him into the breeding rotation this year. Two years old, he's ready. He's small, but he's ready. And we got a little, uh, I don't think we have breeding action yet, but we have definitely a, an interested male, an interested female. This female, I told you, I've shown you her for a number of years now. Hopefully she's ready to breed finally. We held her back long enough. She is a super onyx blood, Honduran T positive, Annery 2 hypo. Get that? So she's a triple homozygous animal plus the hypo gene. Two of those being recessives, but she's super onyx. So that's kind of like a recessive right there, even though it's, I just called it double homozygous, two copies of onyx gene. The blood gene, which is recessive. The Honduran T positive is recessive. Annery 2 is recessive. Actually, she's a quadruple homozygous animal with the hypogene added in for good measure. 
and this is a hypo onyx that's triple head for all three of those blood honduran teapots and manatee too so we're trying to reproduce more of these i guess you can say I'm hoping maybe we won't hit the anery gene on all of them so we can get some really super red. She's red no matter what. Frank Nutt thinks that this is not really an anery gene. In fact, he thinks it's an azanthic gene. Um, he said, because we wouldn't have a red looking snake. When she was born, she was almost white looking. As she got older, she developed more red in her, but no yellows. So she might be azanthic. He believes there is an azanthic gene floating around this line of onyxes, these Hondurans, these Honduran uh, boas. He might be right. If he is, it's gonna be pretty monumental because we don't have an azanthic gene in boas. We only have the anery genes which remove red. And a yellow removing gene would be very useful in boas because boas get yellow as they get older. So now the RDR, Ralph Davis Reptile, black eyed anery gene removes yellows, but it removes reds too. So. We would love to have just a pure azanthic gene. And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we got to do, these test breedings. So we're going to leave these two alone. Hopefully we get something uh, later in the uh, 2023 year. <laughs> We've essentially been cohabitating these two guys for, for over a year now. I didn't get anything. I really thought this girl was going to go. She was so big. And I, I thought she was gravid. I, I just never took the male out because I wasn't sure. And it probably was a good idea because they, they, she wasn't gravid. So we don't have any babies. She's a hypo blood, 66% head anery too. Uh, she might be super hypo actually. I've never bred her yet, so we haven't proven that out yet. She's got that disappearing pattern gene that um, Vin Russo um, founded in his uh, blood projects. And she's being bred to a really, really cool male, an arabesque blood that's head... 66% had call albino, which is really irrelevant here because we don't even know if that gene's in there, but it doesn't even matter. I'm trying to produce hypo arabesque bloods really is what we're looking for. So hopefully that'll happen. I don't know. It's a good pairing. Uh, I'm not seeing any locking action now, but who knows when they're, they've been together. Like I said, they, they basically live together, these guys, and they seem to get along with each other. He's very possessive. He, every time I put my hand in there, he like tries to bite me. <laughs> tries to bite me. So, <laughs> she's a good girl though. She's a very good girl. So we'll leave him alone. We'll see what happens this year. And we'll finish off with one of my favorite girls in the, in the uh, boa business, I guess you could say, a boa project that I have. She's not ready to breed this year, but she is a fire uh, Burke Stone T positive. So she's a T positive albino with the fire gene in there which gives it crazy, crazy accenting, and just a beautiful, beautiful snake. I have her and I have a male also that's also a, a, a visual T positive fire. They will hopefully maybe next year breed, we'll see. I'm not in a rush, uh, just, just love the way this girl looks. I love her tail, I love all her little pinks and highlights. And she just is, one, I got her from Jeremy Stone, so. I'm, She's just exquisite. All right, here's my um, one of my female Aru green tree pythons. I actually saw some breeding action with her and a male earlier this year, so I don't know if she's gravid or not. I really don't, I'm not that experienced with these guys, but I did create a, um, a egg box in the back. I took a, like a Tupperware with a top, I taped on it and I cut a hole in the front of it, you can see the sphagnum moss leaking out of it. I loaded it with nice, moist sphagnum moss. And if she wants to go lay in that high box, she has a high box now, because I don't want her dropping her eggs into the water here. So once again, I don't know if that's, she's been acting weird. So she's been like laying weird on the perch. Right now she's kind of perched normally, but she was extending her body earlier. So I don't know. I can't tell. I guess I'll find out <laughs> if she's gravid in the next couple of days. Uh, I think in a week or two from her from her last shed, I, I think she's got another about two weeks to go. So we'll see if she lays. I told you all these trees fell in my neighborhood from the hurricane. I've been, people, these tree guys have been cutting up all these big trees. So I've been grabbing branches left and right. And I grabbed this really cool looking branch. And I put it in the Boland's Python cage. Look at this boy. He loves it. He loves it. He's climbing. I feel so cool that I can get these good branches, you know, and they're just laying all over my neighborhood. I gotta go searching more tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get all nice little naturalistic branches for these uh, four foot vision cages 
and some of my six foot vision cages because now I know these these snakes, you know, just the diamond pythons, I know will use them too. So this is a really solid piece I got. It's heavy, so the snake can get on it. It's not gonna fall down or move too much. And I put it in there literally like two hours ago. And he's already on it, loving it. Loving it, which tells me the Bolins like to climb, which we knew already, but um, very cool. Hopefully you guys uh, can utilize this uh, data that I'm giving you here on Bolins and uh, climbing tree stumps. All right, guys, that's going to do it today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Um, it was a little quickie. This is a Monday. Mondays are you know, sometimes crazy days, but I wanted to show you a couple cool boas. I, I have some really nice... I'm shocked that these boas are still around. I mean, these 2020s, these dwarf boas, blood, leopard, Gilbert T positive mixes. I have, uh, I think I have a couple females and, and a couple males. I might only have one male left, though, but I definitely have... Um, some cool stuff if you guys are looking you know to get for well-started snakes for some reason i always sell these this particular like litter because i've just i've done this twice they always seem to sell <laughs> when they're two years old i guess people just don't like to wait you know they don't want to grow them up but uh i don't have a problem like i said i i always bow has become more valuable as they get older because you know pe like i said people don't want to wait pe new people getting into the hobby they want to pick up some cool stuff anything with blood to me is is a great gene to get into and if you have like possible heads or head uh, leopard and gilbert t positive stuff you, you can't go wrong with that I, I and i have that one female blood t positive that's head 66 percent head leopard i mean that's a that's a great female that's just waiting there to be plucked um out of my collection you know and once again i you know i'm trying to make room i have a, we would pablo and i would spend almost the whole day reorganizing ball pythons tomorrow we're going to do the bow it's just trying to make room for the new grow up stuff that needs more cage space and we got to move some young ones, you know, and that's all there is to it. I'll probably be selling some breeders too. I know I got some ball python breeders that are going to be going up. And uh, at, at some point I might sell some, even some boas. Got to make room for the new stuff. I want to really focus on really high end stuff. And, you know, sometimes you have to, the old projects that were so important to you five years ago are just not that important anymore. That's just the way it works out. You know? All right, guys, if you love these videos and you like what you're seeing. Oh, you know what? Before we, we go today, I wanted, I kept keep wanting to, to bring this up. But I keep forgetting. I um, saw a video online of this albino hedgehog that is so cute. I'm gonna put the video up. This little guy, if I, can, if I was able to have him as a pet, I would have this thing in three seconds as a pet. That's how cute this thing is. And uh, this woman saw him on the side of the road and she didn't know what it was. She was like, what's that white thing? And she went over there and she was looking at it and she's filmed it, thank God. And thank God for phones, right? Back in the day, there's no phones. You'd have to like sketch a picture, picture of it, and people, no one would probably believe you. But this thing is so cute, and uh, um, once again, I'm so happy. I loved albino animals; they're just so cool. All right, <laughs> I wanted to show that to you because I like to show cool stuff that I find online. Other than that, as you know, if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.